So today we have on the show John McKinley of the John McKinley Band. Thank you, John, for you doing? coming on the show. Really well, thank appreciate thank you for having it. us on here. We're really pumped to be here. So uh, you came out with your first album, Window on the World. Yeah. Brother, I have listened to this album. <laughs> it is so good. you got to oh, cool. tell me why did it take this long for you to release your first <laughs> album? You know, sometimes in life you take detours, and I, I took a detour. I, I uh, got married, had kids, and, you know, did the nine-to-five job, and... And I just I just dropped music for a while, and then I got in back into it uh, later in life, and uh, you know now my son is, is my bass player, and uh, so just his peer group, they're not as uh, I shouldn't say cynical, but probably that's a good word as some of the people my age that say that are doing this, and they have this energy, and they just kind of rallied around me and got me to do some of the things, so it's come out that way. So what over what? All the songs that are on this album, over what period of time were these songs written? Uh, the earliest was probably written when I was 16 years old back in Roswell uh, at my, my aunt's piano. Uh, and uh, Which song is that? That would have been uh, Cool Night Breeze. Okay. And uh, the, so I would say 1970, 71 until, until just recently. Uh, there's probably four or five on there that are brand new. But, uh, so you could have named the album Decades. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, just that window on the world came about just because, uh, well, partly part, partly because of the artwork on it, and also because uh, it was sort of my viewpoint on things, you know, and that's what I mean by window on the world. You know? Now, your son drew this album cover. Yeah, my youngest son, or my oldest son, is the one that plays bass with me and helped write half the songs. But my youngest son is uh, Donovan. He's he's an artist. He's a bass player as well. Okay. Well, I want to make sure I have another one just in case something happens, you know. <laughs> you got a backup. <laughs> yeah, I got a backup. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's a wonderful artist, and his concepts are amazing. So he has actually done album art for a lot of, uh, and posters for a lot of uh, bands in the Kitchener-Waterloo area. So, uh, yeah, he very happily did this for me, and I'm glad. I, I think it's a wonderful product. That he did. So you're quite a musical family. Yeah, it's it's. Now, were your parents also musical? Uh, my mom sang in church. She was she had a great alto voice, and uh, and then when we were kids in church, you know, we would get around the piano, and I'd play a Beatles song on the piano, and she'd say, "No, you can't do that." And uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, but that's kind of where yeah, that background of all that came from. So, what kind of music did you have playing in your house growing up? Oh, in New Mexico, it would have been well because I'm of a Mexican descent. It would have been Spanish music, Mexican music. Really? And um, uh, my mom liked the the swing bands of the '30s, so she 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 like she could, she could sing Ella Fitzgerald. She could do she sing those kind of songs, you know. And those are the kind of tunes I'd, I'd hear them do. My dad uh, he listened here and there, but he just you know even though he's the one that owned the original guitar that I played, uh, he was not the guy that had the. It was really more of your mother's yeah. influence in, in, in becoming an artist. Yeah, and I guess that explains the reason why there's quite a. A wide variety of of sounds on this particular album, and even one of the songs in the album is actually in Spanish. Yeah, it is "Cuando yo me voy," which literally means "when I leave here." But I have it in parentheses, "I'm out of here" because it's kind of, it kind of means like I've had enough of this. I'm I'm moving on, you know. But uh, yeah, that's that's totally um, uh, a, a Spanish-sounding song. But I try to keep it sort of bluesy. I I, uh, I, I try to use blues licks in it and uh, mixed with a little bit of Spanish and uh, as well the, um, the the chord progression if you were really a, a guy that understands how the blues works right it's the same progression Miles Davis even said flamenco is basically Spanish blues so that's okay. what I did <laughs> yeah so uh, when and how did you start playing music and writing music and well it just kind of came easy to me uh, I, I picked up a uh, the guitar and I'm actually left-handed but they only had one guitar and it went this way and I said how do you hold it and I just made myself learn it that way and then as time went on uh, you know the Beatles happened and that was the biggest thing I mean and then you know after you the animals showed up and the stones and all this cool music and one day uh, you know I just thought this was the greatest stuff ever you know and I thought it was rock and roll one day a guy in high school said hey uh, you want to come play in our band we're playing blues and I go what's blues and he goes, you know, and he starts naming some songs. I go, no, that's that's rock. He goes, no, that's blues. And I said, really? And so I realized all these heroes I had, mostly the British guys, 
they uh, they they put a they put a shot in the arm with blues again because they sold it back to this audience here in North America. I I, I think we owe them a, a big debt. Well, they right. called it rock and roll, so they could sell more albums. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, anyways, that's that's kind of how all that came about. You know? Okay, and um, so when you started playing music, um, did you gravitate immediately to the guitar, or did you immediately gravitate to the piano? Like, because you're primarily a guitar player today. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, well, it's funny. I, I actually took lessons on piano for a little bit. But I didn't like it, okay. <laughs> and and I was I found sports, and later I found girls, and you know I just I just I didn't like that. My sister was taking piano lessons, so it was the guitar that drew me in. I mean, when, when you saw the Beatles there with the those cool haircuts and the suits and the you know the guitars and the girls screaming, I thought, well, that's got to be a pretty good job, yeah. <laughs> you know. So I kind of went that direction. Girls. So your son Darius had a big influence as far as you actually making this album. He did. Tell me, tell me the story of, of how that happened. Well, like I say, Darius, he's he's half my age, so his peers are the are the guys that are really vibrant and happening right now, and uh, Daryl Romp being one of them, the guy who produced the album. And uh, when we were going to play for the Kitchener Blues Festival, uh, they had a an award that they give called the Mel Brown Award, and yeah. I received that award that year. So they gave me a set to play, and I was going to go in there and do all the old standard blues things we always did. Because we play a lot of blues, you know, and uh, and Darius said, "No, let's. This is special. Let's do your songs." And I said, "Nobody wants to hear that stuff." He goes, "Oh yeah, if we do it right, they'll want to hear it." So he talked me into it, and we started rehearsing. And and then at the at the actual performance, Daryl, I remember looking down, and who I had only known him a little bit, but I respected him because he's he's a great producer. He's he's done some amazing things. If you want to look up his background, there's a lot of story there. But um, he was standing right there, and he, he came up afterwards and said, why don't we record this? You've done all the hard work. You know, the heavy lifting's done you. You put the songs together, let's, let's capture this moment in time. So I said, okay, that's exactly how it came about. So it was really those younger guys, you know, that said, let's do something about this. Last a bitch, and then you die. Last a bitch, and then you die. I got all these people saying they knew the reasons why. Well, I talked to the Pope and he said, buddy, it's just like this. You'll have to marry before you get that mess. Else you'll be gambling with your eternal bliss. I said, but there's bliss when that miss in a kiss. I get to the point where we say, hey, baby, what we gonna do about this? You mean to say I gotta get hitched? Folk just smile and say, laugh's a bit. Laugh's a bitch, and then you die. Laugh's a bitch, and then you die. I got all these people saying they know the reasons why. And he said, buddy, here's how your card stack. To run this here country, we need a lot more tax. You're the payer, I'm the payee, and buddy, them's the facts. I said, Mr. Congressman, why don't we just fire some of y'all? You know, cancel them European summits of them presidential balls. He's working on the deficit. I said, yeah, right. Last a bit. Last a bit. And then you die. That's a bit. And then you die. I got all these people saying they know the reasons why. That's a bit. And then you die. That's a bit. And then you die. Got all these people saying they know the reasons why.
Thank you. Yeah. So you brought one of your guitars with you. Yeah. So why don't you pick that up and tell the audience a little bit about the story behind that guitar, when you got it, how you got it, and well, all the wars has <laughs> been through it. Because well, it looks like it's been well played. Oh, it has, it has. It's a 1969 uh, Gibson Deluxe, which I mentioned was uh, one of the first new, first models they had in years. And uh, I was about uh, 16, I went and saw this band from Texas, they were called Baby. They had two of these, one kind of a purple one and one like this, and they were playing these beautiful leads together in harmonies, and the tones were so evenly matched, I thought, what kind of guitar is that? I've never seen that. And So I went to the music store and I said, hey, do you have a Les Paul? They opened it up, this is in Roswell. They don't have much, so they had a bunch of tellies and strats on the wall, and the guy had to go back into some room and pull out a, a case and dust it off and open it up, and there was this guitar sitting there. I said, wow, how much is it? Well, okay, so it's gonna, it took me about a year to save up. I had to trade in uh, a Fender Telecaster, uh, actually a, something called an Esquire, which I didn't realize was as valuable as it was. I traded it in for the down payment on this. And so I've had it for, well, it's 45 years old. Wow, you've been well, playing maybe, that for 45 46. years. Yeah, and the reason it doesn't have any skin is we, uh, being from the south there, I wasn't used to really cold weather. And we played way down in Texas, and the next gig, this was around Christmas time, we played in Aspen, Colorado. So. We got up to the mountains. When you get that high and it below sub zero weather, I did. You guys all know about it here, but I didn't know about it. And I brought it in from the truck and opened it up in this room with a roaring fireplace. And as soon as I opened it up, it just cracked, you know. And I went, ah, because I should have let it come warm up to room temperature. Anyway, as the years have gone by, it's just it, the skin has just been coming off. I noticed this one over here. It's it's cracked a little bit too. It's 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 from the same time period. And this is Daryl's guitar, so she brought out because you know, so they're, they're kind of matching, you know. Fantastic. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, please take the opportunity to see uh, John anytime that uh, he's performing. Uh, you won't be disappointed in the, in the live band, and uh, seeing all these uh, great songs on this album. And pick up this album. It's available on CD Baby and iTunes and Amazon and and everywhere. So you can pick it up anywhere, and of course at the you, live shows. You can get it on our on our website as well. Oh, and on the website. Fantastic. And I'll put the website at the bottom of the screen. And uh, thank you very much, everybody, for liking and commenting and subscribing to this channel. And thank you, John, for coming on Thanks, the show. Thanks, Michael. We really appreciate it. Fantastic. Thank All you right. so much. Thanks. Mama, I hope you brought your chance. Welfare, Mama, hope you brought that check. Need me a two for a motion, caught the players' cigarettes. Ah, uh -huh, Mama, you can leave the chain.